scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected several inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. Most remarkable of these inventions is the highly secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now... The Avenger and the Subway Ghost. Inspector White are standing on the subway platform waiting for an express as the train pulls into the station. Come on, Jim. Let's hop aboard this front car. All right, Inspector. Now, we'll let the train pull out before we go into the motorman's booth. Yeah, I want this little visit to come as a surprise. Okay. Come on. I'll open the door and you can take care of the introductions. All right, Larry. That's me. Never in you out of this booth. No passengers. Police, Larry. Police? Yes, I'm Inspector White, and this is Jim Brandon. We're riding with you on this trip. Ah, I get it. Get after the ghost. That's right. Did you ever see the ghost, Larry? No, I never did. It's very little stock I put in the story they tell of it. Well, three motormen on this line swear they saw it, and their stories check on the place where it appeared. Oh, I didn't know it appeared in the same place all the time. Well, it did, approximately anyway. This particular run is five minutes between stops. Each of those men claims he was two and a half minutes out when he saw the ghost. They say it's right around the spot where that track walker was killed two years ago. Uh, Larry, what's that red light just ahead there? Yeah, it's a track inspector, most likely. Yeah, he's swinging his lantern. Uh, that's a signal they use to show they're off the tracks. It's almost time, Inspector. Keep your eye peeled for the ghost. You know, I always figured I was as superstitious as the next man. But this subway ghost business is a little too thick for me to swallow. Larry, there's a man in the middle of the track. Stop! Come on! Watch out for that third rail or you won't go far. He should have landed right along here. Flash the lights around. Well, I'll take this side, Larry. You go with Jim. Okay. He must be under the train. Not under this first car. Come on. We'll work our way back. Got to be here someplace. Uh, don't sign him on this side of the track, Jim. Uh, what could have happened to that man? Well, one thing is certain, he's not here. But the train ran over him. We saw that with our own eyes. There's no use holding the train up any longer. Uh, what do you make of it, Jim? Well, Inspector, my guess is that we've had our first encounter with the subway ghost. Well, uh, whatever it was, it certainly disappeared into thin air. Okay, Larry. Close the door and let's get going. I'm glad all three of us saw it. I swear I wouldn't trust my own eyes if I'd been by myself. Uh, we're up against something here, Jim. I don't happen to believe in ghosts. I don't either, Inspector, but this one promises to be rather difficult to explain. 
That ghost couldn't have been anything but dimension, because there was no place for it to hide, and no time for it to run away. Well, what are we going to do? We'll get off at the next stop. Now that we've seen the ghost, we'll have to figure out some way to trap him. This is a fine mess, Jim. While you and I spend the afternoon in the subway chasing after our ghost, the biggest bank in town is robbed. Well, that's tough luck, Inspector. But the commissioner himself assigned you to investigate that subway affair. Well, ghost or no ghost, I'm not wasting any more time in the subway. I'm going to work on this bank job. Oh, leaving me flat, huh? No, no. I want you to help me out on this bank robbery, Jim. It's a slick professional job. We've got to get those two men who pulled it. Well, I think I'll leave that to you, Inspector. I'm going to stick with the ghost for a while at least. Oh, that can wait, Jim. But this robbery... Catching Robert those Spencer? bank robbers will be duck soup for you, Inspector. Regular routine stuff. You won't need me on that. But this ghost... So is a... you would walk out on me just to satisfy your curiosity about some silly trick that somebody's playing in the subway. Now, Inspector, there's no reason to lose your temper. We just have different opinions about the importance oh, of the... Oh, don't bother me anymore about that ghost. I've got more important things to think about. All right. I'll send in my report when I close the case. Ah, ghosts. Jim Brandon, you prove you're no friend of mine. Now get out of here and let me work. So you and the inspector parted company, Jim. <laughs> Only temporarily, friend. You know how hot-headed the inspector is. Well, what about this ghost, Jim? What could be the motive for a thing like that? That's the thing that fascinates me, Fern. There isn't any obvious motive in disrupting a city-controlled subway. Nothing in a material way can be gained from it. You don't think it could be someone's idea of a prank? Oh, no. Well, where do we begin? Well, first, I've got to dig up some facts that might lead to a motive. I think I'll call on Lester Stevens. He's the controller in charge of that subway line. Maybe he can give me a few leads. Yes, Mr. Brandon, all told that ghost has appeared four times. I don't mind telling you it's playing havoc with our schedule as well as my nervous system. It's about time the police department got some action on this. Well, you can depend on that, Mr. Stevens, if your office will cooperate with us. Oh, we'll do everything we can. Well, look here, Brandon, I'm going to be frank with you. Here in this drawer is something we've managed to keep from the newspapers so far. Take a look at that stack of papers. Hmm. Well, well what are they? Lawsuits. Twenty of them. Ranging from $50 to 3000 People claiming they were injured by the sudden stops of the train due to the appearance of the ghost. Oh. Amazing. And just possibly a motive. No, I don't think so, Brandon. We've had our investigators working on this, and they've discovered that more than half of these claims were put in by professional insurance collectors. Oh, I see. However, I wish you'd keep me posted on all damage claims you receive. We just might run into an angle there. I'll do that. Now, on the other hand, this may be an inside job. Motive unknown. I'm certain we can discount that. Well, that sort of thing carries a heavy penalty. But we're ever no... going to get to the bottom of this subway ghost. We can't afford to discount anything, now, Mr. Stevens, we could test that possibility in short order if you'll arrange to change the train schedule every day and... Mr. Brandon, you're asking the impossible. I have no authority to do a thing like that. Then I'll have to ask the mayor to give you the authority, Mr. Stevens. This city can't afford to pay off in lawsuits because of a ghost. <laughs> Jim, it looks as if your three-day war with the inspector is over. He called while you were out. Oh, what did he want, Fern? Help. This sudden crime wave has him completely stumped. Uh, according to the newspapers and radio, there's been a major robbery every day this week. You've been so engrossed in your ghost, I wondered if you realized that. Well, that ghost has appeared nine times now to various motormen. But, Jim, I really think you should forget the ghost for the time being and give these robberies a little consideration. You're right, Fern. Oh, I've saved all the newspapers for you. They'll bring you up to date on the details of what's been happening. Good girl. Now, before I call the inspector back, we'll just run through those papers. Dead 
daring jewel holdup net thieves fifty thousand dollars worth of gems. Two men dressed as workmen face the mad robbery in a midtown. Armored truck robbed in midtown. An armored truck carrying the pay envelopes of two thousand. Thirty-five thousand dollars taken in second bank robbery. Two men believed to be the same thieves who robbed the Triton Street Bank. Civil authorities appeal for more police, unable to cope with the rising tide of the midtown crime. Now, Jim, I hope you didn't get me up here just to show me a bunch of city maps and charts. Now, take it easy, Inspector, and let me explain. Well, okay. Between these two points I have marked in blue pencil on the map here, the subway ghost has appeared nine times. Oh, listen here, Jim. How many times do I have to tell you I don't give a hang about that ghost? If you're going to keep harping on that instead of trying to help me with these robberies... That's I... what I'm trying to do, Inspector. There's a definite connection between the ghost and the robberies. Uh... There's a connection between them? How? Oh. The ghost has always appeared to motorman going north in this particular spot. Now, take a good look at the map. Here. I marked the places where robberies have occurred in red. Notice that all the robberies were in the immediate vicinity of the ghost. Ah, oh, Jim, are you trying to tell me the ghost committed the robbery? Not quite. The ghost has appeared nine times, and there have been four robberies. Now, here's a time schedule of the robberies, and one of the appearances of the ghost. These show some rather interesting coincidences, don't you think? Uh, yeah. A ghost appeared in the subway almost immediately after each robbery. But, but Jim, what about those other appearances? What were they for? Oh, just to cover up. If the ghost had appeared only at the times when the robberies happened, the connection between them might have been suspected earlier. Uh, your theory is that the thieves used the subway to make their getaway. Exactly. Well, well now we're getting someplace. That could account for the fantastic disappearance of the robbers. But... How did they get down there? Yeah. That'll entail a little more field work, Inspector, but there's another piece of information here that you've overlooked. Yeah? What's that? Although every motorman on that line saw the ghost at one time or another, one particular motorman was always on duty when a robbery was pulled. You're right, Jim. It was Mike Leary. That narrows down our field, Inspector. Sure does. All we have to do is tail Leary every minute and we can solve this case. Come on, Inspector. It's time for us to take another subway ride. According to this schedule, Mike Leary begins his run in five minutes. Hello, Leary. Oh, it's you, Inspector. Yeah, Brian and I are going to take a ride with you for a while. Here you've seen the ghost quite a few times lately, Leary. That's right, Mr. Brandon. I don't mind telling you, I'm getting fed up with that ghost. So are a lot of other people. And I told Mr. Stevens this morning, if I see it again, I'm going to quit. Well, I can't say that I blame you. Say, there's that track inspector again. Yeah, he's waving his lantern to you, Leary. Sure, like I told you the last time, the track walkers always signal us that way. Now, do you know who this particular man is? No, why should I? This is the place, Inspector. Okay, Larry, stop the train. I can't do that. Stop it, I said. Quick, police orders. All right, but I won't be responsible. Now, we're getting out of here. This time, we're going to investigate that ghost before it appears. Come on, you too, Larry. I'm coming. Now, the place where the ghost walks is just ahead there, Inspector. Well, come on. Let's see if we can find anything. we got five minutes before the next express is due on this track. Ah, oh. say, did you... Just feel something fill me, hit your face, Inspector. Yeah, uh, what was that? Oh, a flash of light above us. Ah, uh, uh, it's only cobwebs, Jim. They're hanging down from that big girder. Well, that's mighty strange. Cobwebs. Hey, listen here. I can't hold this train up any longer. Police and all police, I got to stay. <laughs> Somebody shot Larry. There goes a man, Jim. He's crossing the tracks. That train man. I'll go after him. Take care of Larry, Inspector. Careful, Jim. A local coming on that middle track. Hey, Jim. Jim, did you get him? No. Must have taken a long chance and hopped aboard that local. I lost him completely. How's Leary? Find the nearest emergency phone, Jim. Leary's dead.
Now, back to the Avenger and the Subway Ghost. They've agreed to hold up the trains on this line for ten minutes, Inspector. We'll have to work fast. Well, the sooner we solve the mystery of this ghost, Jim, the sooner we'll know where we stand with those robbers. Oh, here's the place where the cobwebs hit us in the face. A few short wisps are still clinging to the girder, but of course the first train that hit that cobweb screen swept away practically all evidence of it. All oh, this talk about cobwebs isn't helping us find the ghost, Jim. But it is, Inspector. Those cobwebs served as a screen on which the moving picture of a man was projected. There's a projection machine hidden around here somewhere. When we find that, we have our ghost. Flash your light around. Uh, I hope you know what you're talking about, Jim. I don't see anything. Uh, it's probably hidden in that next girder or maybe along the wall. Only the tip will be showing. Oh, there it is. In the girder. Give me a little light here, Inspector, and I'll get it out. Well, Jim, we run into some pretty crazy schemes, but this one beats all. Yes, this projector has a long wire attached to the starter. That means the ghost was turned off and on by someone at a distance. Ah, uh, that track walker who killed Leary. He was the only one who could have operated this machine. I think he's our man, all right. Yeah, but what about those cobwebs, Jim? How did he manage that? There's such a thing as a small, portable machine that manufactures cobwebs to order, Inspector. Our criminal manufactured a screen of cobwebs the exact size of the front of the train. They let it hang from that girder. When the motorman saw the ghost, he was too near the screen to stop before running through it. And that was why all evidence of the screen was destroyed right after the appearance of each ghost. Well, bring that projector, Jim. The commissioner is sure to want a demonstration of this subway ghost. It's about time you showed up, Freddy. You get some explaining to do. Yeah. I'm sure glad to see you here, Slick. I wasn't sure you and Curly got away. No thanks to you that we did. Come into the back room. I want to know what went wrong down there on that subway. And it better be good. It was Leary, Slick. He double-crossed us. Stopped the train ahead of time, turned two coppers loose on me just as I was ready to turn on the ghost. It was Leary you plugged in, huh? Yeah. What was I supposed to do, let him squeal his head off? You sure them guys with them were coppers? I say I am. Brandon and White. I've had plenty of run-ins with both of them. You think they recognized you? Yeah. Too dark down there. They didn't get a look at my face. How did you shake them? Hopped between the cars and a passing local. Then I dodged around town for a couple of hours just to make sure no one was tailing me before I came here. Yeah. It was curly, Slick. He's rounding up the gang. We're meeting here at 9 o'clock tonight for the payoff. That little show you put on in the subway has cooked our goose in this town. We're going to pull up stakes tonight. Uh, I guess Curly's plenty mad, eh? Sure he's mad. You messed up the best little racket he's had in 20 years. We just missed running head on into them coppers this afternoon. I figured that shot would warn you to turn back. Yeah, we turned back all right. But that 25 grand in hot money we had with us made it kind of risky to travel around the streets in broad daylight. Uh, how did you, you get... You better blow now, Freddy. I'm back here at nine. Curly and me will answer all your questions then. Yes? That was the information I needed, Stevens. Uh huh. Ah, thank you very much. Oh, I don't think you'll be troubled with any more ghosts. Goodbye. Well, Jim? It's just as we thought, Fern. That man who killed Leary wasn't connected with the subway in any way. No workman was scheduled in that area. He was a member of the gang, then? Yes. In fact, he's the only known link between Leary and the gang. And what's puzzling me is how we're ever going to pick up his trail. Jim, are you certain Leary was working with the gang? Maybe... Leary was in this up to his neck, Fern. Not only was he on that run every time the appearance of the ghost coincided with the robbery... But that phony trainman gave him the signal that everything was set. No trainman ever showed to those other motormen who saw the ghost. Well, those facts seem to tie up. But why should that criminal have killed Leary? He thought Leary had double-crossed the gang when he stopped the train too soon. 
Oh, I see. Well, what are you going to do, Jim? The only chance we have to pick up the trail of these criminals is through the dead Leary. I'll call the inspector and we'll go right to work on that angle. If Leary left a single clue behind him, we've got to find it. against him. Let me see those facts your men collected. Ah, they don't give us any leads. Let me see. Uh-huh. He was a bachelor, 45, steady worker, didn't drink, smoked occasionally, ate his meals with the family downstairs. Well, he uh, certainly didn't live beyond his means, Jim. <sighs> Looks as though we're up against a stone wall. Not here. quite, Inspector. There is a clue here, a very slim one, but worth investigating. Uh, what's that, Jim? That book of matches there on the bureau. They're from a tavern on Delroy Street. That's more than a mile away from here in a very tough section of town. If Leary didn't drink, why should he have gone to a place like that? Ah, it's no clue. Jimmy probably stopped in there to buy some smokes. Tell you what, Inspector. I'm going to have a look at that tavern. In the meantime, I think it might be a smart move for you to assign an extra squad of men to the Midtown District. If we don't round up this gang tonight... They'll slip right through our fingers. Jim, how long do we have to stay here in this tavern? We may be here until closing time, Fern. Closing time? What about dinner, Jim? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to go on a diet for a few hours, Fern, but, but I'll make it up to you later. In the meantime, we'll have to pretend we're having a good time here. That won't be easy. What do you expect to find here, Jim? This could be the hideout of our criminals, Fern. Uh-oh, things are beginning to look up. In what way? A very dapper-looking fellow just came in and made straight for that private room in the back. Well, I'm resigned to a long evening of waiting. You know, Jim, I'm really beginning to believe in that motto of yours. Oh, what's that, Fern? Patience is the deadliest weapon of the law. And the best detective in the world is a total loss without it. Jim. Jim, do you think those three men who just went into the back room are members of the gang, too? Yes, Fern. One of them was carrying two valises. I'd be willing to bet that's the loot for the payoff. Fern, keep your eye on that man who just came in the door. I'll mm -hmm. have to keep my head turned away. He's making for the back room, too, Jim. Okay, he's gone inside. He didn't see you. Who was it, Jim? That's Freddie Barlow. He's been mixed up in small-time stick-up several times. He seems to be traveling in faster company now. Fern, I've got it. Freddy Barlow was that phony trainman who killed Leary. He wore work clothes and a work cap, but that didn't disguise his size and build. That was Freddy, all right. Well, Jim, if he's a local crook, he probably fingered all those robberies for some strange gang. Exactly. Fern, there's a drugstore next door. Go in there and call Inspector White. Tell him there's a job over here for that hand-picked squad that's patrolling Midtown. Meantime, the Avenger will sit in at the private meeting in that back room. <laughs> Listen, Freddy, that's the cut we agreed on, and that's all you're getting. Take it or leave it. Uh, what about Leary's share? Can we all get a cut of that? That has nothing to do with... Keep quiet, Slick. Somebody just opened that door. What was that noise? Put that gun away, Freddy. I'll take care of this. Hey, you're wacky. There's nobody here. The door just blew open, that's all. Well, divvy up that door. Let's get out of here. No use to bother doing that. The police are outside. Who's in here? Where did that noise come from? Somebody must be hiding in that closet. I'll fix him. Open the closet door, Slick. You fool. There's nobody here and no those shots will have the police down on us in two seconds. I don't care. There's somebody in here. I'm going to find him. Here I am, Freddy. But you can't see the adventure. Thank you, 
Stranger. And the police are at the door. Okay, man, grab the door now. Let's get out of here. Where's the door? Where's the other door? Come on. ghost was produced, and that the purpose of it was to stop the train between stations so that the criminals could hop aboard and make a quick getaway. But, well, how did the criminals get down there in the subway to board the train? There's a subway emergency exit in an alley just off Main Square in Midtown, where all those robberies occurred, Fern. The criminals entered the subway through that. But those emergency exits are always locked on the inside. Well, that's where Freddie Barlow came in. Leary dropped Freddie off the subway near that exit well in advance of the robbery. Freddy prepared everything for the appearance of the ghost, except the cobweb screen, which had to be put up at the last minute. Then he went up and unlocked that emergency exit, came back, and was ready to fix the cobwebs and signal Leary that everything was set. But why should he have bothered about the ghost when Leary was on that run? Just in case anyone was riding with Leary, he had to have an excuse to stop the train. Oh. So all the robbers had to do was hop aboard the end of the train and make their getaway underground while the police were combing the streets for them. Exactly. And they took the added precaution of dressing like workmen so they wouldn't be spotted when they entered through the exit or hopped on the train. Well, now that ghost can rest in peace in the archives of the commissioner's office. <laughs> yes, and I can take you to that dinner I cheated you out of last night. Yes, I was wondering when I was going to get invited to break that diet. <laughs> All characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought. A thought. A thought. Remember, listen 